Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a rather nifty drive enclosure for smartphones. This is the Hajibis Magnetic SSD Enclosure. And what it does is it attaches to a MagSafe compatible phone here magnetically. And it comes with a little cable to run it down to the USB Type-C port. Now, of course, this is going to work best on an iPhone, but if you got one of those magnetic adapter rings for an Android phone, it will also work with that. And inside, you put in your own NVMe SSD. And this is useful for doing video work and other things where having some external storage might be helpful. We're going to take a closer look at this because there are some things to consider about this related to power. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how this little drive enclosure works. Now, the price point on this comes in at around $37. Note that there is no hard drive installed inside of the enclosure here. You have to add your own. And the size that it works with are the 2230 NVMe SSDs, basically the smaller ones here. Inside the box, you also get a couple of screwdrivers for fastening everything down. And they also give you a couple of cables designed for the iPhone 15 series of phones. These are USB Type-C connectors. Now, inside here, you can see that I've already installed a 2230 drive. I'll talk more about the drive I chose in a minute. You're also going to notice here that it's got a pretty large capacitor. And the reason is, is that the iPhone is very particular about the power draw coming off of its USB Type-C port. The maximum draw it will allow is 4.5 watts. If it detects more than that, it shuts it down. And that, of course, can impact your video production work. So you got to choose very carefully when looking for an NVMe drive, especially if you are going to run off of the internal battery of the phone. Now, when I was out looking for compatible drives, I was surprised by how few drives, uh, first of all, advertise their power consumption, but also how many go well beyond the 4.5 watts that are supported. So, for example, this is a Kingston drive I found on Amazon. As you can see here, it draws 11.5 watts, even a little bit more than that. Uh, on its peak power draw. I found another Kingston drive, though, a smaller capacity one, that does fall within the spec here. This one uh, draws just 3.3 watts. Now, the manufacturer of this did a video looking at a couple of different NVMe drives you might find on Amazon. Uh, this was very helpful in helping me to decide which drive to pick. The one that I went with was this Lexar drive that, even though it doesn't advertise its power consumption, it does appear to be working fairly well inside of the enclosure. Now, if it does have a power issue, what the capacitor will do is keep the drive on long enough for its cache to clear out and everything to get written back to the disk. But that's no guarantee. So I think choosing the right drive for this is really important. And again, I've been having OK luck here with the Lexar that I picked, but your mileage will vary. And sometimes these drive makers swap out components even on the same model number of drive. So it can be a little tricky with this. By the way, these same issues might extend to those prepackaged NVMe-based solid-state drives as well. So having external power might be important. And this drive actually gives you the option for that. So let me put the lid back on here. I'll screw it back together before we do some testing on it. Now, what you've got here is the host connector. So this is the port that plugs into the phone with the cable. There's no data or power being transited over the MagSafe here. This is strictly just for mounting. But they also have a second USB Type-C port here where you can connect external power. So if you're out in the field, maybe a small battery or something like that, you can mount magnetic things on top of this as well. So you can put a battery on top and run that battery through just to have some safety insofar as the power consumption is concerned and it will also charge the phone at the same time. So the safest thing here is just to plug an external power bank in just to keep everything powered up, and that, of course, will also keep the phone going. Unfortunately, this USB-C port here on the side only does power. It would have been really cool if it allowed for data devices like external microphones and other things to work, but it doesn't. So if you did want to bring in your external microphones over USB-C, you're going to need more stuff like a USB-C hub. And I'll do a video soon about 
uh, my new production rig and how this may or may not integrate into that. So with all that out of the way, why don't we take a look at how the iPhone interacts with this drive for recording externally. All right, so I've got my iPhone out here with the drive connected via the USB-C cable, and the drive, of course, is hanging on to the MagSafe on the back there. Now, in order to record externally with the native camera app, you have to enable ProRes as a format. So you saw here in the settings, I just tapped on camera. We're gonna go over to formats, and then if you scroll down to the bottom, you're gonna see an option for Apple ProRes, and you want to turn that on. And if there's an external drive attached, it will record onto the external drive. But just note how big these files are gonna be. So a 4K 30 frames per second video is going to be about 60 gigabytes per minute. So it's gonna fill up quick, even with a large drive. Now I've got mine set to HDR, which is the high dynamic range. They also have a standard dynamic range option. And there's an option here for log, and that's what a lot of professionals use because it gives you a little more flexibility in color matching when you are out shooting with it. So now that we've got that set up, why don't we shoot a little bit of video here and see how it works. So now we're in the camera app in its video mode, and if I select the ProRes option here, it will now record onto the external drive. And I'll move the phone around here a little bit and see how it works. And I'll let this run for maybe about 30 seconds or so. I'm not gonna make you wait through the whole thing. And when it's done, what we'll do is disconnect this drive and attach it to my computer. And we'll see what the file looks like and how it all played out. And then we'll also look at the speed of the enclosure here as well. All right, so let's take a look on the hard drive now. The iPhone created a digital camera folder similar to what you would see with other cameras you might use. And here we've got our 100 Apple, and there is our 16 gigabyte QuickTime file here. And this is about a minute and 16 seconds. And I did uh, do some higher frame rate stuff towards the end of the video here. So we'll see me doing some crazy stuff here, but it all seemed to work just fine. I'm not detecting any drop frames or anything. Uh, this was recorded at 60 frames per second, but my video system here only captures at 30. Uh, but all in, it appears as though the drive was able to maintain itself over that minute or so of recording. And I think if you were going to have a power issue, it would probably pop up around that length of time. I have run it for about 5 to 10 minutes and haven't seen anything alarming pop up. But again, I think having external power attached is the safest bet because likely you will not be putting the same drive in yours that I put in mine. Let's take a look now at the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and see how fast it reads and writes. Now again, these speeds will vary based on the NVMe that you choose to put inside of it, but as you can see here, the reads and writes are pretty good uh, with the Lexar drive that I have running on here. So all in, the performance on this looks to be decent. Now if you don't want to work with huge ProRes files, you can download the free Blackmagic camera app, and this will record compressed video onto external storage. And you can configure that inside of the Blackmagic camera app through the settings button here. You go over to the media section, and you go to Save Clips 2, and you select Files. And when you tap on the browser here, what you want to look for is your hard drive here. Mine's called iPhone Record and you can create a folder or just drop it on the root like I'm gonna do here by clicking open. And now when I go to record, all of this video is going to be recorded in a compressed format onto the external drive. What I like about the Blackmagic app here is that it gives you a lot of manual control. You get audio meters. It's very easy to work with and you know that your microphones are working, for example, and other things. So I found the app to be very effective. And again, it gives you a little more options especially on recording onto external media versus Apple's built-in app. Now on the Android side, it'll depend on which camera app you are using and which phone you have. So for example, I have a Pixel 8 Pro here that in full disclosure, Google sent to the channel free of charge. And on here, I'm running the open camera app because the built-in app does not support external video recording, at least at the time I'm recording this video. Now inside of open camera, if I go to more camera controls, and I go down to the storage access framework 
if I enable this and then select my external drive here and click use this folder, uh, the app will now record its video onto the external drive. So again, this will work with both iPhones and Android phones, but you will need some adapter to get it to magnetically mount on the back of your device. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is the strength of its own MagSafe connector here. I've got a MagSafe wallet that snaps right in there, as you can see, and you can carry both with you if you want, I guess. Uh, the magnet is rather strong on the back, so when you pull off a MagSafe item, it typically takes the puck with it, so you may have to hold it down when you detach something. One word of caution, though, is that the NVMe's heat is transferred to the metal plate here, so I would be reluctant, perhaps, to attach things that might prevent that heat from dissipating off, so just bear that in mind. Overall, I think it's a neat concept. I would like it better if it had some built-in USB hub functionality where I could bring power in but also attach my external microphones. That would make this thing a killer app. Even if it was a little bit larger, I'd be okay with that because you get pretty much everything you need just attached to the back of the phone without having to bring in all these extra adapters and dongles and everything else. It'd be really slick to have something like that. But it does work as advertised. You do have to be very careful about the power consumption of the drive that you're using. Again, I would recommend keeping a battery plugged into this port here just for safety. But overall, it does what it's supposed to do, and it's a neat idea from a company I haven't heard of before called Hagibis. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.